How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I want to talk about how do we combine different size panels. So we have mismatched panels but we want to combine those together to get the most out of each panel so our resultant system is producing the most power. Now this is not as easy as just plugging everything together in series and adding up each individual panel wattage and then that's going to be our resultant wattage. Not so fast. There's a few things you need to consider and we'll use these two panels. I have a 360 watt helium panel and a 100 watt Thunderbolt panel from Harbor Freight. We'll use these and say, okay, how can we combine these together? What is that combination that's gonna get us the best results? And this is most common for like RVs. You only have so much roof space, maybe a trailer, where you can't just put a lot of large panels on it. You gotta be a little creative. And that might mean you're using different size panels to get the most solar output out of that footprint, that square footage. So let's jump into it. I'll show you what each of these panels is putting out right now. And then we'll start to wire those together, showing you the optimal combination combination and how do we actually go about that. So first step we are connected to that 360 watt helium panel that is running into our EcoFlow Delta Pro and I have a little power analyzer here right before it goes in. Now it's a little hazy out so right now we're just getting 250 watts or so and that is a combination of about 37 to 38 volts and right around 7 amps for our larger panel. Then if we plug in the Thunderbolt 100 watt, take a look at our power analyzer, we're right about 74 watts, and that's a combination of 16 and a half volts and about 4.4 amps. So let's take one more data point, and that is just wiring these together in series. Now remember, I said it's not that easy, and this will kind of prove out the point for us. So we have our negative coming from the 100 watt panel, then we have the positive from 100 watt going to the negative of the 360 watt, and then the positive from the 360 watt completing the circuit over to the EcoFlow Delta Pro. So just a simple wiring and series of the two mismatch panels. So the result in here on the power analyzer is about 58 volts, 4.2 amps, and right around 250 watts. So wait a minute, if you remember, the Helion, which is a 360 watt panel at maximum power point, that's rated, that is standard test conditions, perfect scenario. We actually got these results, so a little bit less than 266 watts. But then when we wired in series, right? So we took a Thunderbolt, wired it in series with the Helion, and then what we actually got was right under 250 watts. So by adding a 100 watt panel in series, we actually lessen the amount of power we got. So that is obviously not ideal, but it is expected once you understand what's going on. So when we wire in series, remember when you wire in series, you're going to add up the voltages. So this is the voltage and the current that we measured earlier for the Thunderbolt and the voltage and current we measured earlier for the Helion. We're gonna add up those voltages, so that's gonna be around 54.5 volts, that's what we expect. But when it comes to current, you would keep your currents the same. That is assuming you have the same panels and you would have the same current. We do not have that in this case. So we are going to be limited by our lowest current. In this case, it is 4.4 amps. If we multiplied voltage times current to get our expected power, that is 240 watts. So we are actually expecting, if you understand how this works when wiring in series mismatch panels. This is why wiring in series mismatch panels might be a very bad decision. But the question is, what is a better way? Let me draw out another scenario which should get us much better results. So in this case, if we had one more 100 watt panel and we brought that within series, we would then be adding up our voltages here. So we expect about 33 volts and then we'd be maintaining that 4.4 amps. So that is what we would expect to get from this series of two 100 watt panels is 33 volts and 4.4 amps. Now, what if we actually bring that down and we wire that within what's called parallel with our 360 
watt helium panel. So we'd bring our positive over. Then knowing in parallel that you're actually going to be adding up your currents and your voltages, assuming they're the same, are just gonna pass through. Well, now we're much closer. So what we would expect from this resultant is 33 volts because comparing the 38 volts from the larger helium to the 33 volts from wiring two 100 watt panels in series, we know we'd be passing about 33 volts. And then we're gonna be able to add up our currents here. So that would be roughly 11.4 amps. So taking our voltage of 33 volts and our amperage 11.4 amps, we would expect to get 376 watts. But let's go ahead and check out in the power analyzer what we're actually getting. So just like the diagram, we now have the two 100 watt panels. Those are wired in series. And then we'll take that and we'll wire in parallel through these two branch connectors. And then that is what's going to run back to the EcoFlow. Now you'll see a link in the description for that branch connector and a lot of the other components we use on these type of videos, which are all very DIY focused. I love DIY type of projects, but if you are looking for a larger system to offset your monthly power bill, most likely a roof mounted system like I'm getting, a great place to start is to get an estimate on the size and cost. So you'll see a link in the description where I went to size out my 11 kilowatt system and get an overall ballpark on what that cost Cost. You can get that information in simply a matter of minutes. And then if you want to actually start looking at installers, they can also connect you up there as well. So you can start getting the quotes in and compare which price and installer is gonna be right for your own home. But let's check out how much power we're actually getting into the EcoFlow now. So taking a look at the power analyzer here. So now you can see we're at 34 to 35 volts, over 12 amps and over 400 watts, up to about 420 watts of power resulting from this configuration. So not too bad, but you can see either voltage needs to be close or amperage, and then you need to select the right type of wiring configuration to accommodate to get the most out of that system when you're dealing with mixed match panels. Now, if you're still planning out your system and what panels to get, it is okay to use the specifications on that maximum power point. I just like to show the actual voltage and amperage and what I'm getting to get expectations down to a little bit more reasonable of what you can find on a sunny day, but not a perfect day. Now, if you need a little more help in series, parallel, and then bringing together series parallel is still a little fuzzy, check out this video right here. We'll do some more whiteboard sessions and run you through those three different scenarios so you can use that knowledge on your own projects. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.